Hello, Jan here, and with Vlogmas well and truly out the window, I thought I'd just jump on and have a chat and tell you what's been going on. I have actually been filming things that I would would have wanted to share with you, but they haven't really turned out very good quality. In fact, I'm thinking I might upload this video in two versions. There'll be the version where I just sit and talk to you and then just upload it as it is. And then when I'm talking about some of the other bits and pieces, I might try and um, insert bits of video that I've taken over the last few days that are not, frankly not good enough to, to upload yeah. on their own. Sorry, the dogs are making a noise. So I might try and show you just little bits of not very good footage. <laughs> so stay tuned because you never know what's going to be in there. You know, things like um, on... <laughs> On our way down to the Long Barrow to do the dawn ritual, I was filming some of the drive, thinking, well, you know, you're not going to see a lot of, of what's going on, but it turned out to be just pitch black, you know, there just wasn't in, enough light to see anything. Sorry, the puppies are playing. Um, and even before that, on the on the Wednesday, there was something... Not that nice happened. Nothing terrible. It just wasn't that nice. We've gone to the pub to meet my friend Alan as we do every Wednesday. We go along, I have a pot of tea, you know, we spend just a few hours there having a lovely chat, put the world to rights, all that sort of thing. And we always use, we always sit at the same table and we reserve it. So Wednesday afternoons, that's where you'll find us. Except for this Wednesday, we got there and there was, um, an old couple sat there okay fair enough and as, as we went up to the bar thinking well we'll just have to sit somebody else somewhere else um they said that um they won't be staying very long they'll be gone shortly okay fair enough not a problem at all and they were saying that the old lady's um got dementia and her husband brings her in and okay that that's absolutely fine so uh we sat down um somewhere else ordered our bits and pieces and then when they did get get up and leave we just went back to the table and so I went over I sat where actually not where I normally sit I I normally sit um to the right hand side but the tree's got flashing lights and because I've got epilepsy I thought it's probably best if I sit with my back to the the Christmas tree that is I'll sit with uh, my back to the Christmas tree and then Neil can sit where I normally sit so it's slightly odd way round but but it was fine we had a lovely chat you know we really enjoyed ourselves but when it was time to leave as i stood up i thought i can smell urine and then i felt the back of my legs and i've been sitting in a pool of wee so i thought well i'm gonna have to tell them at the bar that this has happened so that they can do something about because it was a, a it's actually a church pew but it's got a padded seat on it they're going to have to deal with that so that the next person doesn't do the same so i went across to the bar and i said look you know the the lady that was there before i was has had an accident and one of our one of the other ladies who goes to the pub every week, so we know her from the pub, she said, oh, that's not the first time. She said, I've sat in a chair after her before now and had exactly the same problem. So I really don't know what can be done about it. You know, it's such a shame. You know, you can't tell them that they can't go anymore. You know, we were saying that perhaps we could try and encourage them to sit in seats that haven't got padded cushions on and things. But, you know, I mean, I wouldn't want it's not her fault the lady who did it it's absolutely not her fault and and you know god forbid it could happen to the best of us that you know we end up in that sort of condition and if her husband's one little bit of relief from his day which has got to be really really hard looking after somebody in that condition is to go out and have a drink in the pub because apparently they go every day if that's all that he can do to make his life worth living then all power to them you know and you know, I made it very, very clear when I went and told the um, the staff at the pub. You know, I'm I'm not complaining at all. I'm only telling you so that you can deal with it before somebody else sits in it. 
but it did mean that I felt very, very contaminated. And bless them, they gave me um, a plastic bin liner so I could put it on the seat of the car so I wasn't going to get it all over our car seats, which wouldn't have been very good. Um, so that was very kind of them. And then, you know, although I'd had a bath just before I went to the pub to meet Alan, the first thing I did when I get in is just jump in another bath and put all my clothes in the wash because you just feel... But then it made me think as well about my daughter who, who is a carer and you know this is what she does for a living you know looking after old people who are incontinent and things and like I say I just think you know there but for the grace of, God, of the gods go all of us so you know I would never hold it against anybody but, but that was Wednesday and um, then um, Thursday was the 21st so we were going to a to the All Cannings Long Barrow which I did say in one of my last my other videos that I would try to film I do have a very very small bit of footage from that which I will try to insert on the second edition of <laughs> of this video if I can because as you know my editing skills really aren't very good at all but um, Inside the barrow, it's it's very, very dark. And so there's um, Tim, who owns it and built it, puts some lights in there, but it's still very, very hard to see. And where I was using this camera that I'm using now, I was holding it in my hand and trying to film it, but was kind of realising that my whole face was in shadow. So, like I say, it's, it's not very, very good footage at all, which you will see on the second edition. So if you've already seen this once, you can watch it again if I do manage an edit. And Sorry, the dogs are distracting me. To, this is why I normally film upstairs, because they're playing away. They're not doing anything wrong or anything bad, but they're jumping about. And, you know, you get two... I mean, Oakley is now nearly nine months old. So he's pretty much almost full size. He's about 24 inches tall at the shoulder. Um, you know, they're, they're both full, full grown Labradors now. He's got a little bit of growing left to do, but if they decide to have a wrestling match, then it's noisy and they bump into furniture and things. So it is very, very distracting. So like I say, we were up um, at four o'clock to go down to the Long Barrow because it's, um, we're in West Sussex. The Long Barrow's in Wiltshire quite a significant drive and of course because we were going there for a sunrise ritual there is a time limit you know you can't afford to be late because the sun's coming up when the sun comes up so we had the car all packed up um the evening before so I'm just trying to get a little bit comfy I should have bought a cushion to put behind me I'm... the chair's a bit deep for me um, yeah, we had the car all packed up from the night before, so we took cloaks, um, white robes, scarves, um, and then we... Sorry, this is so distracting. Then we set off, um, and you know, this was my car I've had for, I've had this car for over 10 years now, and it has been such a reliable car. It starts first time every time. Never any problem at all whatsoever, except for that morning. Turn the key, nothing. And again, nothing. And you know, we do now have a second car because Neil's just bought a car, but mine's a bigger, more comfortable one, and it was all preloaded. So I really wanted to go in my car. And so it's kind of putting all our energy into, <laughs> psychic energy to, to get that spark going, to get the engine going. It did start. And, you know, once it was started and on the way, it was absolutely fine. But it was just that little bit of worry to start with. And, and we set off and uh, off we went. It was a, a dry drive. There was a couple, a li about a mile, we had a few spots of rain, but the weather forecast was good for the morning. We actually get there and there's this almighty wind and we, we, go, shush, we go obviously fully dressed 
but then we put our robes and cloaks on when we get there. It's not something you want to be putting on to drive in. So we parked the car, and so it was a bit of a, an issue trying to put on robes and cloaks in this Force 10 gale. You know, there wasn't any rain, but it was just so windy. And, you know, trying to get a cloak on in the wind, because the wind just catches it and takes it. In. I nearly flew off down the road. <laughs> that would have been a sight, wouldn't it? Um... But anyway, we got it on, um, got to the barrow, and at the moment um, they're grazing sheep on top of the barrow because the, the grasses that grow on the top obviously need to be kept under control. So they've got, um, I don't know how many sheep they've got on at the moment, but that means that they've got an electric fence around the barrow that isn't usually there just to stop the, the sheep wandering off. So that was um, something we had to negotiate our way over. But in the end, it turned. Tim, the farmer, came over and he just picked up one one bit of uh, the stake that was holding one bit in and laid it flat so I could step over and then he just popped it straight back in again. So that was all all right. And there were already people there waiting. We were about probably about half hour, 20 minutes early. So in plenty of time, it was already light enough to see because the it gets light um starts getting light around about an hour before sunrise but obviously sunrise is when there's when it really gets properly light and you know there were some people already sorry they're going underneath the coffee table and making an awful lot of noise banging up against it um and somebody, because they saw us in robes, had come over and said, are you running the ritual? And um, in the past, Tim has always had um, druids come from Avebury to do the ritual, whether it's um, summer solstice, winter solstice, or or any of the other. One year he had a, a lady doing a humanist ritual, so it wasn't actually any particular um, specified religion. But now that the Long Barrow is a des designated site of worship um, and designated as a Druidic site of worship, then it's, it's usually Druids who come along. And that's partly why we wear robes. We used to not wear robes when we first started going, but now because it is a designated site, in case anybody official comes along at any time, they can actually see that there are people there using it for its express purpose even though it was actually built as a columbarium which is just um, a building to house cremated remains oh stop it you two oakley i'm trying to film just stop this is echo behind me and now oakley's there um and so somebody has come up to us and said are you doing the ritual this morning and we said no we think I could see somebody holding a piece of paper so I said it, it might be that person and then um, at the I think it was about 10 past 8 the sun comes up on midwinter solstice and the long barrow is aligned to the midwinter solstice so as to sunrise on the midwinter solstice so as the sun comes up it floods down the central corridor right to the stone at the very the right to the very back of the corridor and Tim had said that um, it was actually the 10th anniversary of breaking the soil to begin the build for the barrow and um, I think the I'm not sure exactly what year the barrow was started I think it was uh, finished in 2014 um, and he was saying that you know once it was built it was such a relief to see the sun come up in the morning and do exactly as was intended because he said to, to have to move the barrow just a couple of degrees would have been a bit of an issue <laughs> so Tim um, has read a, a poem about solstice and he said that um, after that someone will do a ceremony looking at me okay <laughs> and so um he did the bit that he was going to do 
and then he said kind of over to you and it's like I had nothing prepared because it's always been somebody else doing it so we didn't actually have a full ceremony or ritual but I managed to come up with just some generalised words and then as a group, and I suppose there were about 20 of us at the time, uh, Neil and I led the Arwen, which is a call to spirit in case you're not pagan and don't know, where you just chant Arwen. And as we were chanting Arwen, there was a murmuration of sparrows in the next field. It was the most amazing, you know, talk about flowing spirit. and. <laughs> It was just incredible. Actually, before we did the Arwen, we did the Druidic prayer, and then went three times on the prayer, then into three times on the Arwen. And then, I invite, there were, as a circle had formed in front of the door of, or, or the gate that, at the entrance of the barrow, I invited people to open that so that we could just allow the sun to come through. And then Wendy, one of the other ladies who was there, was saying that um, when she first came to the barrow, um, her goddess is Epona, which is um, has to do with, with horses. And there is a white horse carved into the hill behind the barrow so she knew that that was the right place for her um, and it has become her spiritual home so she did a beautiful invocation to Epona and then another lady read out something else and, and that was kind of it for the celebration as well but after that Neil and I, um, Tim had asked Neil and I to call an Arwen at the end of the, because by by this time, you know, it's about an hour after after the sun had officially ris risen. It had been a little bit cloudy when the f sun first came up, but as the sun rose higher in the sky, the clouds opened out and the sun shone straight down the corridor. And so Neil and I had been asked to go down to the very end of the corridor and call the Arwen inside. Um, which was a lovely thing to do. And then because we were inside and we'd done it in the corridor, we went into each of the five chambers. And some of the people who were there had come in and joined us in some of the chambers, some had waited outside. And it was just the most wonderful day. It was wonderful. And we had said to Tim, you know, we are more than happy and so thrilled that he invited us to do anything. But if he'd like us to do anything in future, if we could just kind of know a little bit in advance then we'd prepare something and we'd bring bring more to the table as it were and so he said well I think that this might be the first of, of many that you'll be invited to do so I'm, I'm already got my planning head on for spring at, for, for the spring equinox and um, so we'll come up with something a little bit better for a little bit more thought a little bit more planned but then the, it never matters too much if the winter one is slightly shorter because it is that little bit colder. You know, people are more inclined to, to want to be involved in something outside that lasts longer when the weather's a little bit more conducive. And then when it comes to the summer solstice, because the barrows aligned to the midwinter sunrise, in the opposite direction it's aligned to the midsummer sunset. And in the summer, we all go on top of the barrow so that we can actually see, and we have seen the most amazing sunsets there in the past. So I look forward to, um, to doing more and better and possibly even getting some of it filmed in future so that we can show you. And of course, anybody who is in the UK who would like to come along to one of the open rituals at the Barrow would be more than welcome. I mean, drop a comment be below if you want to, and um, I'm sure I'll let the, the dates be known in, in advance. But the funny thing is, I had, I've got a beautiful um, silver um, triple goddess um, headdress, which 
I did think about should I get that out and wear it and then I thought no if it's one thing turning up in robes but if, if I suddenly turn up in a silver headdress I'll look like the great high wizzy was of whatnot and that's not fair if somebody else is running the ritual so I didn't bring it and then afterwards I, re I seriously regretted it so from now on I will take my silver headdress and either wear it or leave it in the car one or the other and uh, it, on the very very small chance that Ray who made it sees this Ray he's just come out of hospital yesterday after after being quite poorly so if you ever see this Ray blessings to you and all health um sorry I need to jump up again because Echo's asking to go back out into the garden hold on a minute I I'm not going anywhere I'm just stepping out of the way there you go bears being good as gold laying there oh now my phone's going hello I'm filming quickly yes please right bye see <laughs> typically unedited film if this is left in um that was neil saying do i want curry tonight so where was i up to um yeah so planning for future rituals at the barrow and um tim had said that he'd looked for a decent bottle of mead but couldn't find one so we said ah oh, we know we've got a farm actually it's not near us at all it's quite a long way away but there is a farm that does um special it's right excuse me right you two stop it Sorry, I can't have both of them doing zoomies around the room. It's just not big enough. Um, yeah, so that will mean a trip down to Middle Farm, which may or may not mean another film to show you. It's the most amazing um, place. It, it specialises in cider, but it does do a really good selection of mead. So we need to get the mead. I need to get my... All the um, ritual paraphernalia that I have, but that hasn't been used in... Oh, can you hear him? He's uh, doing one end of the garden to the... Oakley! Oakley, stop it! Just calm. Calm yourself, you silly puppy. Calm down. Yeah, so, as I say, I'm... When I finish this, I need to try and edit it. Now, this morning, um, we've just had the massive job of moving this sofa, which is in three pieces, and each piece is heavy enough that needs two men to lift it because it's um, a recliner, so it's got all this iron work in it, and it's really, really heavy, but we were taking up the old rug and putting in a new rug. Because we've got the dogs... Um, even with a carpet cleaner, the rugs do get dirty and a bit smelly after a while, so every now and then I just say, new rug time. So put the new rug down, but it's a big, big job, you know, taking up the old one and because it, it has to go just slightly under the sofa, we had to move all the sofa out of the way. And even though we hoover every day and I get the hose and hoover underneath the sofa. There was, moving the sofa parts, there was still enough fur under there to make a whole new dog. I don't know how it is that it doesn't get all picked up. Oakley, what, what are you doing? What have you got there? Are you doing something illegal? Oh, it's a bit of old nastiness. Right, we'll put that there. 
Yeah, so we've done that. It's uh, Christmas Eve tomorrow, so we've um, Neil's out at the moment because he's just taken the old rug to the uh, to the tip to get rid of it. It seems such a shame, really, because um, the rugs, when I get rid of them, are usually only about a year old, but they are dirty, so I can't really give them away. Oakley, what are you doing? Just stop it. Yeah, it's not really clean enough to give away, otherwise I'll give them... And I think, you know, if they're too dirty for me to keep, you know, I can't really offer them to anyone else. Yeah, so then we've got um, Christmas Day, yeah, it's Saturday today, Christmas Day is Monday. We don't celebrate Christmas Day, but my son is coming over, so presumably he's going to want dinner. So we'll just have a, I think we'll probably have roast beef. Um, and then that will be silly season over and done with. And then, as I say, start preparing and planning for for a, a year's worth of lovely open rituals at the Long Barrow. So anyway, I will call that it for, for this one. As I say, keep an eye on the channel because I may re-edit this very film, take out any bits that I don't like and insert some bits from the Long Barrow and from the drive and from anything else that may, may be of use. So keep an eye. I will probably put it under the same title and or something. I don't know what I'm doing yet. I never do, do I? <laughs> anyway, I wish you the very best of, of the season and I hope you have a wonderful time. Lots of love. Blessed be. Bye.